She was beautiful. She was beautiful. The immediate fact that blessed itself. Breathless. With a cluster of freckles trailing up to her eyelids, she had potential walking up and down her cheeks. Her almond eyes were bright as sea. Three hairs on her head. Only three. With an expanse of soft skin. She peered at me behind her mother's leg, five or six years old maybe. Now, I was at a conference composed of barren heads where I was just another unfertilized seed in the crowd in front of me stood a 30-year-old woman whose worry wrinkles painted a mirage of memories to come. The woman held her daughter's hand like an IV, injecting security. She asked me, is my daughter going to be okay growing up? I won't ever forget the light brown skin, almond lids and sea eyes that found a common connection within me. All bald girls lived the same life, or so I've been told. The mold we fit and play with doctor's appointments and claustrophobic wigs is the same for each of us. The never-ending questioning, the loss of identities, the back alley bullies, the pressure to hide the disorder that is only seen as a cosmetology issue, so I reached out to the child and asked her if she wanted to touch my head. It's very soft, I said. In that moment, I made a subconscious decision. I didn't want to live the typical example of the bald girl anymore. I didn't want to live the life of a crumbling facade because I knew what it was like to grow up with a troubling diffidence that used to gnaw at the bone, the constant feeling of being a deer caught in a mind of headlights, still a stone faking confidence as fear spun out of control. And I know what it's like to hate the medium your soul inhabits. I know what it's like to stare at a mirror, confusing your figure for a monster. I have been there. When your mind has a way of turning imperfections into self-harm weapons, I have been there. And with the media's obsession with appearance these days, it makes it harder for kids to face the mirror and see the amazement hiding under a maze of self-inflicted judgments. Haven't we all been there? seems the constant focus is on changing the way we look. If only our flaws disappeared with a puff of smoke, then we'd be happy, right? Then we'd be happy? Well, I don't think so. I've been alive for 17 years on this planet. With alopecia for 15 and a half. I've gone through every treatment you can imagine, every pill, every potion, even topical ointments. I felt the wrath of doctors with stethoscope nooses loosely choking me. I've sat in chairs with women handing me different samples of hair so one day I could be pretty. I've been called a novel of nicknames in fifth grade. I was called eyebrows. That was the same year my last eyebrow hair. trials and tribulations, they were worth it. And if I could have told that little girl one more thing, I would have begged. Wear your flaws on your sleeve and heart of armor on your chest and never feel afraid to express the strength that has made you, you. Never sacrifice your individuality and never regret the decision to be yourself. Love the body you have been blessed with and the story that it tells with that truth. With that truth, you can make any obstacle Solvable. I did so with what seemed to me impossible. And with my utmost faith, I say, give up the follicles and instead just be you. Beautiful.